our next story is all about another attack. So an attacker has targeted wealthy crypto funds and exchanges using Telegram. So this person or persons were known as Dev0139. They joined several Telegram groups that are used by high profile clients and exchanges to identify their targets. Then they posed as the targets employers, another employee of the targets exchange. They invited the target to a different chat group and then pretended to ask for feedback on how the exchange structures their fees. Then they sent this person a weaponized Excel sheet, which contained accurate data on fee structures among among exchanges. That Excel file initiated a series of activities, including using a malicious program to retrieve data. OKX, Quobi, and Binance were all targeted according to Microsoft's security intelligence team. And so a lot going on there. I think the takeaway from this story is that if you work for a high profile crypto company, especially during the bear market, we need to be super careful about downloading documents and clicking on links. We can dive into that a little bit later, but Zach, I saw your hand go up. I just want to say wealthy crypto funds, they're just like us. They get spammed on Telegram too with all sorts of shady stuff and maybe should know a little bit better. But I think CZ was out here on Twitter sort of distilling this to its most pure takeaway. Don't download stuff from Telegram from someone that you just met and is pretending to be your friend by showing you the rates at which you can exchange assets on various crypto exchanges. Uh, trust but verify. Be a little bit skeptical when it comes to these stu- this stuff. Telegram has long been a hotbed of just annoying spam groups uh, to outright scam attempts. So I think be sa- be, be sa- to be safe out there, you really do have to be a bit skeptical of some of these things and to be careful on a lot of these chat platforms. That to me is sort of the, the news you can use here is don't download shady documents from the internet. You never know what they might have, especially as it relates to uh, crypto and crypto funds. That's my two cents. I'll sauce it down to Will. What do you got? Yeah, I'll go really quick, then hand it up to Wendy. Uh, I think you're totally spot on there in the comments uh, from both Jen and Zach. And Telegram is a hotbed for all crypto scams, so it's not surprising to see them involved with this at all. And every year we have like a different iteration. Really, every like three months we have a different iteration of some sort of attack. And this one, just pretty simple, like don't download something on your computer. Otherwise, it's very simple for that backend software to go in and like hack things around and mess stuff up. So be careful what you click on. Of course, I'm interested to see like what comes out of this. Hopefully nothing high profile. It was enough for Binance CEO CZ to tweet about it, however. So probably a pretty sophisticated attack if he was like sort of thinking about it. Wendy, up to you. So there's a setting on Telegram and you can actually make... um you would go ahead and click it and it makes sure that you don't automatically download images that are sent to you that are in chats. I think that that's something important that everybody should use. Um, You don't want to auto download anything. A file could be malicious. You want to be very careful what you're clicking on. Telegram is also a pretty hotbed for a lot of scary stuff. I rarely use it anymore. I don't like it anymore. Just lots of weird things happening. Um, Also kind of important to note, um, this goes for if you've got a lot of money, no money, whatever it is in the middle. Would you accept candy from a stranger on the street? <laughs> would you? I no, wouldn't. So no. that's a, Will would. That, that's that a, makes sense. Depends <laughs> on the candy. Is that the only answer? thing I have that, that's a, Trust your neighbor. That, that's a time. That's the type of mindset I have going into these things is I try to apply the same way I would act with somebody um, in real life on the internet is I don't accept things from strangers I don't know. And I think that people should do the same, practice the same things on the internet. Do not accept random links or Excel spreadsheets from different people. I, what I, one of the tips that I do is I always ask people to send me a screen cap of what it looks like. Um, and then I also send to my team so they can verify that it's not dangerous and scary. So be safe out there, guys. That's great advice, Wendy. I recently attended a security briefing for one of the DAOs I contribute to, and I left it with anxiety, just anxiety. I was like, oh no, this is bad. I don't know if I should have all of this power. I may click, I may download. But I think that the main thing is, is if you don't know, you can just forward it off to the IT department or the security department of wherever you're working. Just have them verify or do a little bit of research. If you don't know who this is coming from and they claim to be someone who works where you work or one of your colleagues now that we're all working in kind of decentralized environments where, you know, someone could be your colleague and you've never spoken to them before, you've never seen them in person, do a little bit of research before, uh, before giving them the information they want. 
and use secure passwords. That is one thing that I took away that I think a lot of people don't do. They think you're never, they're never going to get hacked, but just secure passwords. I saw someone's hand go up. So whoever, it was, I think it, it was, was me. Will. Or it was Wendy. Okay, you guys. Really fight quick, for it. I'm gonna fight Will right now. I just want to say, use a burner phone. Literally, use a burner phone for like Telegram, Discord. Anytime you're like interacting in chats, make sure it's not linked to any emails to you, etc. It keeps your stuff safe. And please, for the love of God, please stop keeping cryptocurrency on the cell phone that you use for day to day stuff or the computer you use for day to day stuff. It is just very dangerous. Will. Yeah, don't make yourself fraggable, I think is the story here. And I think this pairs well with the story from yesterday, right? We're talking about Ledger introducing its new phone. And that's, or not its new phone, its new device for storing crypto. And I think that's what everybody wants, right? Like you see stories like this and you're like, that's not going to affect me. That'll never happen, but it can happen to you. And then on top of that, it's becoming increasingly common and easy for these things to be developed. So they're going to hit more people all the time. So just in terms of like products out there, I think the one yesterday we talked about, maybe a little shill, I don't have it myself, but it looks like it's probably a pretty good solution for onboarding more people into self-custodying their own coins, get your coins off your exchanges. If we've learned anything from FTX, then I think it is get your coins off exchanges and into self-custody if you can. And I think that this is a great story to remind you of it, right? Like This is the sort of thing that's happening out in the wilds of crypto. People are getting scammed on the Telegram. They don't even know it's going to happen and it just does. So get your funds into self-custody. 